Welcome to Project Me, the podcast. I'm your host, Tiffany Carter, the founder of Project Me, multimillionaire entrepreneur, former TV newscaster, money-making expert, female empowerment speaker, and self-proclaimed office supply addict. My mission is to take the mystery out of making big money. Every week on Project Me, the podcast, I'll share success tips, strategies, and stories from other entrepreneurs, experts, and millionaires, showing you exactly how you can achieve your most exceptional life. Now let's get to it. Exciting announcement for all of my listeners. I've officially opened my exclusive group, the Project Me Passive Income Posse, to the public. This group is by application only, so we can keep the group high vibe and spend our time, energy, and expertise only helping those of you who truly want massive success and impact. You get live weekly trainings from me, special guest coaches, and direct access to me and my business partner for all of your questions. To learn more and apply, go to projectmewithtiffany.com, click on work with me and select Project Me Posse. And of course, any questions, feel free to DM me at Project Me with Tiffany. Welcome to the podcast and posse Project Me with Tiffany Carter. So you think you may want to start a podcast or you have started one and your relatives and BFF are your only subscribers. <laughs> like with everything I teach, it's not as simple as you create it and they will come. Unless, of course, you're like Kim K or Justin Bieber or something like that, which I don't think either of them listen to me, do they? Hey, guys, if you do. <laughs> um, <laughs> so to teach you how to create a podcast that actually creates fans and results, I brought on master podcaster and coach Chris Burns. He's the founder of Becoming Your Greatest Possible Self podcast. And you guys, I'm going to let him tell you about it. He does a 12 hour live streaming podcast. I was on it. It's like, I would have to like snort illegal drugs to do this. <laughs> What's up, Chris? Oh my gosh, it's it's the passion, Tiffany. You you know about passion. That's how we do this. That's when you have a message to get to the world, man. You just you're hungry for it. You do whatever it takes as long as it takes. And that's that's who I love surrounding myself with. People like you. You are a nut. I mean, I was like, <laughs> this guy is like a freak of nature. Uh, listen, I used to do four hours straight on CBS on TV, four hours straight of a morning show. And it was yes. like, I was, I mean, we were dying. <laughs> All of us were dying. Even like the, there's always like the old male anchor, right? Like the old season <laughs> pro that, that guy probably was like doing speed to do it. I mean, it was brutal. <laughs> And so when you're like, oh, I do a 12 hour live stream, meaning you actually see it. So it's TV and yep. it's audio. So you can either, you know, you can do both. You can see it on Facebook. How do you keep number one? How do you keep your energy up to do that? Like, and I was like, not your first person you interviewed. I think I was number like, what was I? I don't know. I was like probably number eight of 12 or whatever. Oh, and yeah, the day. Yeah. So you were just like, as much of a spaz. So how do you yeah, do they, it? They start at 11 and then the last one starts at 7 p.m. Pacific. So I really just make sure I'm playing the game all in. Everything I do, life, business, fitness, spirituality, it's like a game. I am all freaking in. And when I was playing video games when I was younger, I would like grow my character to the maximum level it could be to be a badass, right? Like that's that's who I was committed to being. So I transferred that over into life and I said, I'm going to be the guy who's willing to do this. And 94 12 hour marathons later, I'm still getting myself in that in that captain's seat. And I'm saying, OK, we got a ship to fly here for 12 hours. It's it's sink or swim. And there's no swim. There's no sinking. <laughs> it's all swimming. It's all. I fly. mean, listen, you guys, I got it. <laughs> we're going to give you some inside scoop. Um, not everyone is a great guest, even if they have great credentials right. or even if right. like maybe you talk to them for a few minutes in person and they seem very engaging and charismatic. Something happens when you get people live, especially when you're recording video. In yeah. fact, most people aren't great guests. So yeah. what do you do when you get on a dud? How do you so, get them to like uplift their energy? 
Yeah. So for me, one of the biggest things that really works is having a pre-interview call where I can build a relationship with the people who come on the 12 hour marathon so that they have that trust. And there's, I understand a little bit more of their energy. Now, that being said, like you said, when they get in front of the camera, it might be a completely different person. They like turn bipolar all of a second, right? All of a sudden. So I get to make sure that I'm bringing the energy and asking engaging questions that they care about. What does this person care about? How can I be curiously engaged about what's meaningful? meaningful and important to their freaking life because people will light up and will go on for hours and hours and hours when you find what their buttons are, so to speak, of their passion, of what brings them alive and what fulfills them. That's so true because in sales, which you guys know, obviously I teach a lot of, um, but in sales, they, if like the go-to I tell people is if all else fails, talk about their animals. Yes. Because even the grouchiest person... <laughs> will soften if you talk about their animals <laughs> except i did have one time where like there was a guy who's like i don't i don't do animals i don't do pet hair i'm like well all is lost now tiffany all is lost Bye -bye. <laughs> uh, <laughs> now it's not happening so i have a lot of listeners who probably you guys listen you're like god it'd be really fun and cool to have a podcast tiffany seems like she's having a great time or they listen to your show which you guys have to listen to his show um and you can access it through i always shout out instagram because it seems easier but he's at i am millionaire chris i am millionaire chris you guys gotta like jump in for this live marathon 12 hours every wednesday because you know what's cool is no matter what time of day you can po i'll pop in or out you see when i pop <laughs> yeah. in He's still going. I still so I do. I swear to God, I will pop in because it's like it's live streamed on Facebook, right? First off, I'm like still not in total belief this is possible week after week after week. So I'll still be like working. It'll be like, I don't know, five, six o'clock. I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna pop in, see if see what's happening with Chris on a Wednesday. And he's still going. He's still going. So people who are listening, no, your show, no, my show. It's like, oh, my God, they laugh. They have fun. It sounds so interesting and intriguing. I want to create a podcast. Share some myths about <laughs> share some myths and reality about creating a podcast from scratch. Yeah. Well, one of the biggest things that I that stopped me from starting my podcast is thinking that I had to have millions and millions of followers and subscribers and listens like right off the bat. If I didn't, then like my podcast wasn't worth anything. And that's so untrue. When you have a thousand loyal fans, a thousand true fans, raving fans, these people who really dig what you do and, and they're vibing with your message, those thousand people will carry the message and the, the spirit of what you're doing farther than like a million people people who are lukewarm about what you're doing. So when you have a podcast, it's a really, really great way to reach people and, and to touch their souls. I found it's a really personal, intimate experience with people because you're in their ears. So one of the myths is you have to have really big numbers for it to be worthwhile and worth your time. And I think a lot of people that they get that confused with the ego, with number shame, not having enough, right? It's like just triggering that deep soul wound of I'm not enough. And so I'm really here to remind people, hey, Go start whatever it is, whether it's a podcast, whether it's doing a live event, whether it's writing your book. How, if you get 10, 100, 1,000 people there, whatever, celebrate it. Celebrate every step forward because if you're not celebrating the little stuff, then why would you be trusted with the big numbers? If you can't be grateful and appreciative, that's been one of my biggest secrets and my biggest catalyst to get me to where I am today is gratitude and really being grateful for the amazing human beings that I'm surrounding myself with, like yourself, Tiffany, like Petia, who's doing a live event in like four days. And like, I just, I'm so excited about that. So the big one is number shame. Don't think you need a big following to be able to be successful. So whether that's you already have the numbers or you need to get them quickly for it to be a good podcast, that's just totally not true. The other thing is a lot of people really suck at the launch. A lot of people want it to be successful, want to blow up really quick, and they don't have proven strategies that they're using to get the word out, to promote, to market, to have these, these advertising methods, whether it's doing paid ads, whether it's having your best friends and family and people, colleagues in your community share about it. A lot of people don't have a strategy and follow through on that strategy effectively to make their launch, build the buzz, get in, in touch with like uh, public relations, go do a, a press release, whatever it might be. A lot of people don't know how to do that stuff to really get the word out and have a successful launch. So I'd say that those are two of the biggest uh, mistakes that people make. Yeah. And he, like I said in the beginning, it's if you create it, they will come and be like, oh, OK, I have an Instagram <laughs> account. 
I'm going to post, you know, pictures and even good content. Mm. And they'll just come. I don't have to do anything else. They'll just eventually come. I use some good hashtags. No, guys, people, they're <laughs> people, you have to help people find you. It's so yeah. noisy. So, I mean, obviously, people hire you to help help them grow, help them launch properly, help them if they're stuck and they're really not making much traction, how to get that traction. What are some ways that are free that mm. people can get more exposure to their podcast? Yeah. Well, one, one thing I also wanted to touch on before I, I go to that is, Tiffany, you really help people build their business, right? And that's a big part of monetizing, like having a strategy to make money. Do you know how you're going to make money with your podcast? That was another thing that I left out in terms of the mistakes that people make. They just think, oh, well, I'll just put my message out there and all of a sudden I'll make money. No, it's like you have to have a strategy. And I created a list of like 21 different ideas and ways that you can make money and I can share about that or, you know, give those to you later, put them in the show notes, whatever it might be. But um, um, having a clear path to your profit and how you're going to make money immediately right off the bat, that's super important. So talking to sponsorships, um, getting sponsorships and having a, a way to make money from your podcast, super important. So that being said, what are some free ways that you can get the word out? So I like to create a Facebook group where you are going to announce to people, hey, I'm going to be launching this at such and such date. Let's say June 1st, I'm going to be launching this podcast. Do you want to help and support me by rating and reviewing and subscribing? They say yes, I say great. Can I add you to this group and I can keep you up to date on all the latest news and updates with the podcast launch? So that's one of the biggest things is people don't create the community for the podcast right off the bat. So when you get a Facebook group going, that already starts the buzz. It's like, hey, something big is coming. That's that's a really great reason to get people involved and to ask for help. A lot of people are afraid to ask. A lot of people are uncomfortable with asking to, to receive. Like, hey, what can you do? Can you support me financially? Financially, can you uh, shout it out on your on your show on your um, on your social media channels? So it's really important to ask for what is important to you. So that's number one: is really ask people to be a part of that launch and to share about it, to contribute. You have people who you built up goodwill with. You built up these relationships. Maybe you've been putting out good content. Maybe you've just been there for them, supporting them emotionally, physically, whatever it might be. So cash in, so to speak, on those relationships in a very loving way. Know that you are serving people at a bigger level by starting this podcast. Know that the work that you're doing is like it's monumental, it's impactful, it's influential, making the world a better place. So trust that your cause is big enough and that because that cause is going to drive the, the planet to be a better place to live in, that you deserve to ask these people for help. So I'd say that's the number big number one is bring that community together, bring the Facebook group, ask people for help. That's huge. And then also if you can do a contest or, or some kind of promotion in alignment with your podcast launch, whatever the theme of it is. So for example, I help people with podcasting. So if I wanted to get a contest and a promotion going, I would give away a microphone. I would give away a pair of you know headphones or something like that that people will use in their equipment and their setup. So maybe you're launching a podcast about animals, right? And and in teaching people how to train their dogs. Maybe one of those those giveaways might be like a, a, a dog house or something or this amazing fancy technology or a hundred dollars worth of dog food or whatever it might be, whatever is your target audiences, what it, whatever would make them happy. So it's really getting clear as well on who is this podcast for, who is the show for, what is your content really going to do to transform these people's lives? Like, how are you going to do that? Um, so there's just a couple of ways to get people excited. So here's another fear a lot of people have. And to be honest, you guys, as you know, I'm always like almost over, I overshare, whatever. <laughs> um, <laughs> I was tripping when I went to start my podcast. My podcast is only, you know, nine and a half months old. I have between 10 and 12,000 unique downloads per episode now, which is awesome. I'm very grateful for that. Um, but I, even though my background, right, is as a newscaster, I know a lot of cool people, right? I still was nervous about getting guests on my show, booked on my show, because it's like, why would so-and-so who is maybe well-known or well-known in their industry or whatever, or a busy person, why would they come on my startup show that has obviously has no downloads or subscribers yet? I mean, it's like a grassroots show. And that I know that's a fear. If I felt that fear and I have those contacts, I know a lot of people who might not know anyone. It's like, 
I don't really know anyone who's like that amazingly worthy of a guest on a show. What do you tell people? Mm. It's amazing. It's such a great question. Number one is connect with people and be real. Like if you're being real with them and say, I love your work. I've been following it forever. You, you just like spark my imagination and creativity and passion for me to be a better person, a visionary, a leader, an entrepreneur, whatever it is, like be sincere and that wins people over the most. So that's number one is just be you, be real and care about people and say, I love your stuff. I want to support you in getting your message out to the world. Do you have any promotions coming up? Are you launching? Launching any books, any big events. How can I support you in what is most important to you? And if you can, do some research. Like, look at what they do every year. Maybe someone has a yearly event and you can do some re research on that and say, hey, I know you got this awesome event coming up. Can I help you promote it by coming as a guest on, on my podcast? So, timing is also really important. Find out when they're launching books, events, uh, promoting stuff. That's a really great opportunity for them to be open, more open to getting on shows. So, the other thing thing I want to recommend is share with them how you've used their material, their wisdom, their experience, their content, whatever, to make a difference in your community. So a popular example might be, hey, you made a video last week and I shared it with my entire audience. We had 300 people who reached out to me and said it was awesome. These are big numbers, right? Or potentially could be if, if it's conversation. So um, I, I shared it with these people and they reached out to me and they said, this was an awesome piece of content. Like I loved it and you were doing such amazing work in the world. I want to get you in front of my audience because they love you and I would love to do an interview. So share with them how you have already used their content and their wisdom to interact and engage with your audience and make a difference with them. So I'd say that those are two really big things. And the other thing is, if someone's not ready to do an interview, don't like give up. Don't be broken hearted because it might just be a no right now. They might be in a busy season. They, they might be writing their next book and they said, I'm not doing any interviews. So don't take it personally and ask, hey, if, if now's not a good time, when can I circle back around? Can I can I circle back around in three months, six months? Would that be a good time to check back in with you? And don't give up. You know, just it's it's the follow up game. And know that when you start a podcast or a show or anything big that you better be committed to being here a year from now. If you're not willing to keep doing this thing beyond a year, two years, three years, like until then, why are you going to start it? Like that's, that's like saying, Hey, I'm going to go have a baby. And if it's not the healthiest, most perfect behaved baby within the first two or three years, I'm done with it. I'm just going to give it up. It's like, no, you really <laughs> keep nurturing it for the rest of its life. <laughs> oh my God. I love you. <laughs> But when you, when you listen to my show, since he admitted before we came on, he's never listened to it, which is really sad. This is like what podcasters do, though. We're horrible about it. Yeah. If you listen to my show, you know I use crazy analogies. So you just like fit right in, man. Yes. That was as, that was as sideways, <laughs> sideways as it gets. You know what I want you guys to do as an exercise? Those of you who have a show... Right. Mm -hmm. I don't care if you have episode one, your episode, you know, 212 practice what Chris just explained to you on getting good guests and practice it with us. Mm -hmm. So do it in the yeah. DMS yeah. DM Chris at I am a millionaire, Chris, and mm -hmm. at me, you know, mine at project me with Tiffany and practice with us. Cause at least, you know, like you can even say you listen to the show, yeah. you're reaching yeah. out and practice with us. And I, and I, I know for a fact Chris won't be mean and I won't be mean. <laughs> and I might even tell you like, Hey, this is how you could have done that better. Yeah. Right. Or if you nailed it, like you could end up having one of us on your show. Like, and then at least like you start getting your confidence, like, Oh, okay. I get it. It's not, it's not as hard as I made it seem. How, yeah, I just like yeah. offered you up without asking. Dude, I love it. I love it because that's, that's one of my favorite things is helping people to get more effective at their approach. Like if people are open to the coaching and the feedback, oh my goodness, I love you. <laughs> I love you so much because like you are really committed to the growth and I want to help and support you however I can. Now I made a mistake recently and I know I did. It's like <laughs> I, my brain wants to tell me I didn't cause it's my ego, uh -huh. but in my gut, I, I went a little too far, right? I, I can go too far, but it's something I also teach. You're really not putting yourself out there if mm. you don't ever get told no, or if you don't sure. maybe push a little too far, it's better than playing it too safe, right? Amen. So Amen. I went a little too far and I'm, I'm actually really embarrassed sharing this with you. I have so much respect for you and what you do. So anyway, I'm going to share it and you can tell me your thoughts on it. 
So <laughs> I'm going after, I like having guests of all different levels. You don't have to be a millionaire. I don't give a shit. It's about the story, what you have to offer, your vibe. I feel like that's what makes my show interesting. And I know you're similar. Yes. But strategy wise, you definitely want to have on guests that have a big audience or a much yeah. bigger audience than you, because they're on your show. And if they are of integrity, right, they'll end up at least sharing it somewhere in their Instagram stories or whatever, yep. that they were on your show. So I went after someone who I mean, in the grand scheme of things, it's not like it was Oprah. Okay, like, let's calm <laughs> down. Right. But it was someone like in, I guess you could say the coaching space who has, you know, more, much more of a well known name than myself. Mm -hmm. And I was, I was feeling myself, you guys. So I went a little too far. And I uh, right off the bat, pitched a swap. And what a swap is, so for you guys who don't know, is, you know, I'll have you on my show and you have me on yours. Well, coming on my show is now of high value because of my amount of downloads and my all of you amazing raving fans. But this person's show has it probably in the millions of downloads and has been doing <laughs> it longer than me. OK, and I went right off the bat with a swap. I didn't get met with a no, but I, I got kind of like semi ghosted. So let's talk about this. <laughs> Give me a therapy session, Chris. Oh my gosh. Well, you know, I think it's, it's super cool because you can share that with your audience, right? Like that's one of the most powerful things that you can do. That's going to build the love of anyone who's listening right now, man, Tiffany is a champ. She's courageous. She's real. <laughs> that's what you can count on her for, right? Like, so Tiffany, I, I just love how you did that. And there's going to be so many freaking opportunities. If you like, if you lose sleep, if you sweat over this, if you, if you allow it to, to reach your soul at all, to, to make an impact in a negative way, you're, you're just like wasting your energy. You're wasting your time. There are people who are suffering who need to hear what you have to say. There's people who are hungry to, to be heard, right? Guests and people who you can interview. And because this person said, Hey, you know, that's not quite a fit. And then their actions and behaviors were kind of, you know, not in alignment with being respectful and, and kind towards you, like saying, Hey, not right now. Let's circle back around in a year, two years, whatever, six months when your downloads are a little bit higher. They just like, it was kind of disrespectful in what you're doing and what they're up to. So I think it's really important for you to recognize that, Hey, you're going to get no's. And there's people out there who want to be on your show. There's people out there who want to get their voice out there. So go find those people. Those are your tribe. Those, those are the people who are in alignment with your soul and your journey. And you're going to have so much more fun with them anyways. Exactly. And here's the thing. Like, I knew I did it. And I'm, you know, listen, it's I've, I've had a lot of years, right, of sales. I've been told yep. no in every possible way. And I was, <laughs> guess what? I always say this, like, no doesn't really usually mean no. And unless right. we're talking about, you know, like a sexual <laughs> circumstance, well, that's right. not what we're talking about, folks. Right. But it's right. like she, she didn't. It was a she. She didn't say no. But I knew I went I went too far. And it goes back mm. to what you said. Like you have if you want a great guest, especially someone who's maybe more seasoned or whatever than you, you need to make it a, all about them. And yes. I and I inserted too much of myself. Would you agree with that? Yeah. Yeah. That's what it sounded like. It's like, how do I give you a win first? Like, what can I do to move your agenda forward? Not, Hey, I want to create a win-win. Cause I, I know like we, we both got good stuff. I want to win. You want to win. It just like that energy didn't land for her. No, apparently. it didn't. I was like, <laughs> I want to win, win, man. I was real. I was really feeling myself. So here's the thing, you guys, it's like, trial and error that's going to happen. Yes. You're going to have people who say no. I had someone who um said no but was at least honest about it and she said like you said earlier, I have um a health issue that no one knows about and I am not doing any podcast interviews all this year. Wow. So she chose to. I already had a relationship built up with her online, but she chose to tell me that. So sometimes people aren't going to take the time and effort to give you their why, but just don't make one up in your head. Like, oh, they're saying no because you're a piece of shit. Like, <laughs> you, is that true? Did you do you know that's what they're thinking? 
You don't know. Right. Like circles, the, the circling back around, right? The follow-up game is so powerful. And I think a lot of people just give up. The, like, sorry to say it, but a lot of America is like weak-willed, right? They, they get a no. They're soft-skinned. They're walking on eggshells. They don't want to uh, offend anyone or rub them the wrong way. And it's like, hey, that's not going to work for you if you got a freaking mission and a vision and something that you're building, a legacy, an impact that you're creating the world. Like, you can't get hung up on that stuff. And you know what's really, really cool? I'm like getting goosebumps thinking about this. The people who say no to you today, who make a big stink out of it, whatever, like it'll, it'll hurt a little bit, but think about in three years and five years from now, when you're talking to people who are, let's say millionaires, deck of millionaires, hundreds of millionaires, or people with that type of following, like just super your, your influence and your relationship, the, the capacity of your relationships has amplified so much that you're going to be playing on a completely different level. And the people who said no to you today are probably going to be wanting to get on your show and wanting to be in your circle. So I think it's, it's, like that, you know, will this matter in five years? Probably not. So just let it roll off your back. And that's, that's something I've really had a challenge with is like not burning bridges when people are being like, silly, <laughs> you know, like, like, why, why are you doing this? You're, you're just like totally not respecting my time. You're just being a jerk. And I'm like, okay, what's the best thing for me to do? And I actually had something with this because someone said they wanted to, to join one of my programs, a mastermind program. And I said, cool, like, here's the information, go ahead and sign up. And then ghosted me for like a week. <laughs> and I'm like calling and texting. And I'm like, dude, what is up? Are you okay? No response. And I said, okay, since you're not willing to respond to me, I don't need people who are like just going to show up and say yes to my face and then disappear after the fact. I don't need more friends and followers on, on Facebook and Instagram. So with that being said, like you disrespect my time, I'm going to have to say goodbye. I wish you the best succeed in life and, and keep thriving, keep growing. And so he ended up responding after I said that and saying, Hey man, sorry, I just been super busy. I'm like, bro, you didn't respect my time. Like I'm, I'm not going to, I'm, I'm not going to have you in my program. And he's like, yeah, I did. He didn't. That, that's it. That's he just left it at that. Oh, I'm like, yeah, this this <laughs> you guys, I know you guys can relate. So if you're loving this so far, or at least if you're entertained, because we're both we're both a little whack, <laughs> take a screenshot takes one second. And then after you're done listening, um, post it in your stories on Instagram and tag me at Project Me with Tiffany and tag Chris at I am Millionaire Chris. If you forget Chris's, I'll make sure that I repost it and I tag him. This way we know if you loved this so we can both like bring more content like this. Yes. Yes. And really, it's <laughs> then it's fun because you're sharing the love. And it goes down to the whole point. This is something that I do that I encourage you guys to do is to share the show. Because if you loved it, likelihood is someone you know, or a few people you know, would also greatly appreciate it and love it. So you would share if you like bought a cool t kitchen utensil, or you tried a new <laughs> restaurant, you would share. So That's share right. a podcast that you know that you love. Okay, That's right. So here's another thing that people who have either started podcasting, have a podcast or want one get nervous about. It's the reviews, the iTunes, mm. the iTunes reviews. Dun, yes. dun, dun. <laughs> so here's the thing. And correct me if I'm wrong. iTunes is the only um, platform that does reviews, right? I think um, so. As, as far as I'm aware, I know other, other platforms have comments and stuff, but reviews iTunes. Yeah. So here, like 80% or something like that of podcast listeners are listening through iTunes. So iTunes yep. is extremely important. So getting someone to leave a review, which by the way, you guys, I need some fucking help with the reviews. So <laughs> send me some. We love. got this. We got this. I Tiffany. mean, good Lord. So <laughs> tell us like what, how do you get people to do a review? First off iTunes, it's not exactly, it's easy to do. It takes like 90 seconds, but it's not super obvious. So what do you do to get people to give you, you know, honest reviews of the show? Yeah. So the best thing that I've found is having conversations with the people who are tuning in. So who are the listeners? Number one, how do you, how do you get people to raise their hand and say, I listen to your show, Tiffany. I listen to your show, Chris. So how do you create dialogues? And Tiffany, you are amazing at this. I've heard you do it like four or five times throughout this is talking to the audience. So if you're not doing that in your content or in your podcast, in your videos, really connect with the audience say, Hey, like, what are you doing right now? Like take out a piece of paper, 
grab a pen, be ready to take notes, pull out your phone, be ready to take notes in the notes section, do more calls to action so that your audience is used to you giving them directions and instructions, right? So that's super powerful to build that that communication, that two-way communication so that people respond when you say, hey, go to the website and sign up. So I really love that, how you're doing that, Tiffany. It's super powerful. So the other thing is have conversations with the people who are tuning in. Say, hey, like I noticed that you shared my my uh, my content. I, I noticed you shared my Instagram story. I noticed that you're sharing my podcast. I love it. Thank you so much. What's your favorite part about it? What are you getting the most out of it? And get create a dialogue. Don't just be like, hey, I, I love that you're, I saw you shared it. Can you also go do that, right? So it's like build build some relationship with them. Get to know them. Find out what's important to them first off. And then after you've done that, it takes a little bit longer, but after you've done that, then say, you know, I would really appreciate you if you went to iTunes and gave a review you. Here's a quick video on how to do it. So I would make a tutorial video on how to do it on iPhone. I would make a tutorial video on how to do it on the computer. Depending on what they have, you can send them a quick video that says, here's how you do it. It's pretty simple. You know, go go here and, and write your review. So that would make a huge difference for me. Will you be able to do that? Can you do that for me? Would you be open to doing that? And when people do that, like when they say yes, Hold them accountable. A lot of people are afraid to hold people accountable for what they say they're going to do. So hold people accountable. Follow up them. When can I follow up with you on that? When when can I check in if, if you had time to do it? About a week? Cool. I'll, I'll come, come back to you in a week and check in, see how you're doing, see how life is. Cool. And then follow up. Put Create a list. Create a spreadsheet. Create a notebook. Whatever you got to do to like – take take uh, track of who you've talked to and what they've committed to. But that's super, super important. So let's talk about cash. My mm -hmm. favorite topic, yes. aside from self-worth. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about cash, you mentioned there's, you know, you have a, it sounds like you have a freebie for the audience on like 20 something different ways you can monetize your podcast. So you're going to have to give me that link when we're done because now everyone's going to ask me for it <laughs> and I, and I want it to open the loop. <laughs> I want, I, mommy wants it too. Um, so how, what are some different ways if you're not, you know, if you're not like Grant Cardone or you're not Gary V, you know, that's obvious to me, then you get sponsors coming to you, you know, so what are some ways um, that, that someone who's starting up who doesn't have a ton of listeners yet, how can they monetize their show? So it really depends on your gifts and abilities. People who have tech genius will have a different pathway than people who have, let's say, writing and communication genius or people who have on-camera genius. So let's say you have on-camera genius. Maybe you want to create a video telesummit, right? You want, you want to create a series, a video series that addresses a very specific problem that your audience wants to solve. Like 20 bucks, 50 bucks, 100 bucks. Like start small. Don't, don't make something big and extravagant that's like $1,000 or $2,000 until you've started to test and verify that there, your market actually wants this service. You want, they want this product. So create a, a video training series. That's a, a great option. You could do it on your own and make your make it of yourself, but you could also take those clips from the interviews, from the podcast that you've already recorded, and with the permission of the guests, package those up and sell those. Sell that as a, as a video training course, okay? So let's say video is your genius. Maybe not. What about communication and writing. You can package those same interviews up and transcribe them and turn it into a book. Maybe you want to, to create a book and have these guests pay to be a part of a book that you are in charge of publishing and marketing and all that good stuff. So the guests could pay, let's say 500 bucks, a thousand bucks, 1500 per chapter. And that way they get featured in the book and the work is basically done for them. All they have to do is show up on the interview and you'll gather a little bit of information about what they want to be promoting and the focus of the chapter of the book. And of course there's a lot of like contractual stuff and, and, and like security that you got to put in place to make sure you're protected and their brand is protected and everyone wins. You, you want to set clear expectations up front. So that's super important. Um, so those are just two ideas. I think some other really great ones are coaching and serving people with, with whatever you're talking about in the podcast. How can you actually serve people with that information? Are you an expert on it? If so, coaching people, consulting, that's super powerful. Can you start a mastermind group? 
right? Can you can you start a mastermind group of the guests? You can do it with the guests, the people who've come on your podcast, if they're all similar and they want to grow in their mindset and grow in their expertise, if they're similar. Or you could say, hey, you're all a bun- bunch of diverse people. I think it'd be really great to get your expe- expertise in, d- in these different areas in the same room. So that's super powerful as well. The mastermind um, courses, whether it's a, a video course or you can actually pot Uh, package up just the podcast audios and put those into a course. Make it uh, like a three-minute, five-minute daily thing that gets released to people. And over time, you'll have different ways to be able to, to create money with this. But like there's a lot of doors that get opened up as well. Sponsorship is another door. How do you record a 30 second or 60 second clip and promote a company that values the audience that you have and values the exposure that they'll get? When you're first starting off your podcast, it might not be that easy to get a sponsor. But here's the thing. Find local people. Find brands who who love you, who connect with you, who vibe with you. Go build relationships with them. Go like serve and, and support them. Go give them shout, shout outs. Build the trust first and then say, hey, like I'm, I'm just starting off this podcast, but I would love for you to be the sponsor of it. You know, what would work for you if you could contribute some kind of monthly amount to get a 30 second or 60 second clip in this in this podcast or 15 or whatever it ends up being? What would work for you? Is there anything that would be a drop? in the bucket for you to, to just show that, hey, you know, I value this, this podcast and I, I would love to sh- shout you out and get you in front of these people. So that's a really great way. And we can dive into more specifics of how to get those sponsorship deals and stuff like that. If you want to have a conversation, you know, always reach out to me at I am Millionaire Chris. I'm happy to talk to you about what would be your specific thing that's going to work. But other opportunities open up like speaking on stages. You can put your podcast in front of people and say, hey, I love speaking on this. Who do you know who is hosting an event that speaks? on this. Reach out to your guests. Ask them who, if they know any events that you'd be a great speaker for. So there's a lot of different stuff, but it really depends on where people are going with their business model and what they're really, really good at so that they can stay in that lane and not try to do everything and try to be everything to everyone. The common theme of everything he said is, if you guys noticed, it's not you just do a bot podcast and then people come to you. The common theme of everything he said is you need to repurpose, you need to recreate, you need to go after, you know, sponsorship of like size brands. You you do have to put in that work unless you're a celebrity or unless you have some crazy hookup, which most people don't. So who shouldn't even bother doing a podcast? Because we all need to know our own lane. One of my gifts is I'm very self-aware. So yeah. I know, like, I would never be a good accountant, ever. <laughs> like, even when I was I broke, it. I yeah. paid, I went to, like, H&R Block, shout out H&R Block. I went to H&R Block and paid, which I didn't have the money to even pay for them to do my taxes. But I knew that I, it would be, a, I'd be, like, audited immediately. Like, I had yeah. no, I'm just, wouldn't be good at it. So I know my own lane. So there are quite a few, you know, people that should not start a podcast. So yeah. who who are those people? Yeah, the people who a podcast is not for is again the the quick fix instant gratification um, type of people. Hey, if you want to go play poker and, and bet your odds on you know getting those those hands that make you thousands and tens of thousands of dollars, then go do that. But podcasting is not going to be that. Podcasting is a long term investment of your time and energy to build a brand, to build a platform that makes a huge impact and a difference in the world. And you have to learn a lot of skills. You have to learn how to communicate. You have to learn how to interview. You have to learn how to really bring the energy and bring the best out of the guests. You have to learn how to how to sell. You have to learn how to market. You have to learn how to promote yourself because nobody's going to do it for you, right? So that's super, super important. Um, so other people who it's not a good fit for, you know, people who want to complain and, and want to just like be a victim. I don't think you have anyone like that in your audience, Tiffany, but hey, for anyone listening, you you probably know some people who it's not a good fit for because they just want it instant. They want to complain. They want to just like bitch and moan all the way there. And it's like, if that's you, like nobody's going to want to work with you. The enthusiasm, it sells. For me, like my, the way I get all my guests and do this 12 hour marathon is because I am on fire doing he what is. I'm doing. <laughs> I was like, I didn't know who he was, A. B, he leveraged a relationship because I adore his girlfriend, so that was smart, so that really helped. Um, three, I was like, when I saw what he did, I was like, he's not a normal human, and I was intrigued. 
<laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Find, find that thing that makes you stand out. You know, for, for me, it's the 12 hour marathon for you. It might be something else. Maybe you record all your podcast interviews in the jacuzzi, like sipping on, on drinks, you know, whatever it is for you, find your secret sauce. But, um, it's really the people who, who aren't willing to put in the work. And especially if you are tech challenged, if you don't have super clarity on where you're at right now, it's all good. Like we have step-by-step processes to get your podcast up and running at whatever like budget, whatever level that you want to do it at. Maybe you just want to record the audio. You just press a button, you press stop, and th- you don't think about it again. Maybe that's what you want to do. That's there are solutions me. for that. <laughs> that's why I have a producer. That's right. There's there's solutions for that. Maybe you're, you, you have a really low budget and you're willing to put in the time and the energy to learn and to work. Then there's solutions for that. There's like the do-it-yourself model where you just get the steps. I'm happy to give you that information. Just do it yourself. Like if that's where you're at and you can't afford to like fast track the process and do it right, then do it yourself. There's tons of guides out there. I'm not saying I'm the only person who's helping people start podcasts. And if you are vibing on this energy, if you love what Tiffany's saying, if you love what I'm saying, and you want someone who's going to remind you that it's possible, who's going to remind you the right way to do it for where you're at, for your genius, for who you are, your message, your purpose, then that's why you hire someone. That's why you invest a little bit more to get that VIP treatment to know you're special, to know you deserve like the best way to get your podcast started. So it's really people who are, who are willing to invest in themselves. That's who I love working with because if you're, if you're trying to take the, the cheapy route for the rest of your life because you're in survival, you're in scarcity. Hey, we can break you through that first off. So don't trip. <laughs> but if you <laughs> want to stay committed to that, then go somewhere else because we're, we're not about like just penny pinching for the rest of our lives. We love abundance. We love money. We love prosperity. We love investing in the things that matter to us, like our tax p- people in H&R Block. Right? <laughs> like, <it's- laughs> I mean, you guys, I made $15,500 when I first started <laughs> as on TV, by the way. And I still hit up H&R Block. Thank you. And here's the thing is I knew now granted, right? I've I've been an entrepreneur was an entrepreneur 10 years prior to starting Project Me with Tiffany Carter. What I did learn and I of course I learned it the hard way. Thank you. I learned that if I want to do something, I want to do it right. And it's worth the investment. So Mm. I do attribute why I have so many downloads in such a short period of time and a ton of like all you guys like my raving fans I fucking love you guys and like send me dms and do the screenshots and you guys have to do the itunes reviews I really need those but I have that because I did that investment I have a producer like a legit podcast producer if I known Chris I would have hired Chris I just didn't know him at the time I have a coordinator I have an actual human that schedules all of my podcasts because it's a human touch it's okay you can send a calendar link that's okay too but I chose to do it this way um because it works so mm-hmm. I agree with you. If Could I have been cheap and been like, oh, yeah, I'm going to try to like edit a show <laughs> on my own, like in my spare time? That would be the biggest lie I told myself. Mm. <laughs> like, I don't even know what software is used to edit a show. Seriously, I don't know. What is you just wave, wave the magic wand and it I goes just, and edits itself. <laughs> I, I don't care. Now, I do write all my show notes because, again, like I, you know, like Chris said, too, we have to know what lane we're in what we're good at. And I'm an excellent writer. So I and I actually and I love it just because we're good at it. That doesn't mean that we love doing it right. But I love it. So I do write all of my show notes, because I actually love it. And I'm good at it. So Mm. what do you say to people who are like, you know what, God, listening to you and Tiffany, you guys are so outgoing, you seem like crazy extroverts you know, super confident. I'm not like this. Like how I really want to show, but if I have to be like you guys, like I probably won't make it. What do you have to say Mm -hmm. about that? So number one, you have your magic and it's important that you understand what your magic, your secret sauce, your voice, your message is. If it inspires you, 
the podcasting route, communicating with people, talking, having interviews, then explore that. See, see where that goes for you. Invest in that and developing those skills. If you say, I hate talking to people, you know, I don't really like being with people. I'd rather be behind a computer screen. Then maybe it's not the right fit for you. Maybe you would be best creating content behind the scenes and building a blog or creating videos, but not actually talking to people in person, whatever it is for you. Like I think in, in, business, you have to grow through whatever kind of blocks or resistances that you might have around being self-conscious, around being introverted, around being someone who just doesn't believe you connect or communicate well with other people. For me, it's that's personally what I've found. A lot of other people have different gifts though. So find out what's your gift and really maximize that. So I also want to share one quick story. When I was in high school, I was um, probably one of the most introverted, shy kids you've ever freaking seen. My best friend asked out my very first girlfriend for me through text message. Oh my God, you're so cute. I, I turned red whenever I had to get up and speak in college in a, in a public speaking class. And when I get up there and I start speaking, the next thing I know I'm done. I'm like, what the heck did I just say? I don't even know. And I'm just like, I feel beat red, you know, and just like, it's so hot. The room is so like intense. And so like that was through college and I was getting out all of my stress and anxiety and overwhelm and all these emotions through like unhealthy, unserving habits that really led me down like a dark place. You know, I was, I was feeling really crappy about myself and my life, but it was from hitting that rock bottom moment that I said, I'm never going to wind up in this place again. I'm going to figure out what the F got me here. I'm going to be curious. I'm going to be a student, be a learner, be a grower and figure this ish out. And so I climbed myself out of that, that pit that I was in of darkness and despair and depression. And I finally get to this place. This is like, you know, six years ago, I was, I was really experiencing those emotions. So today I'm, I'm a freaking shining star doing 12 hour marathons and I'm proud of who I am and what I've created, but I wasn't always like this, especially two, two plus years ago before I started the 12 hour marathon. Like I didn't even know what is my message. But the thing is, I said, I'm going to I'm going to do this 12 hour live stream to promote a webinar. I did it a couple days later. I say, wow, that was freaking awesome. We got to keep doing this. We got to this is something special. People are like turning their heads. There's tons of engagement and stuff just from this 12 hour live stream. What can we do with this? So I started doing it every week. I didn't know what it was going to turn into. I didn't know it was going to become a podcast. I didn't know what was going to happen, but I just kept showing up and putting myself in the in the gauntlet, in the spotlight, in the captain's chair to create. And if you can have that kind of accountability, that kind of discipline to your purpose, to your mission, to serving people, like your message will come. It may not look perfect at first, but do the best that you can with what you've got, where, where you are, and everything else will take care of itself. Just keep showing up. Keep doing the best that you can every day. And that's why I love to say every day is the best day ever. Some people might say, well, Chris, like, what about when you get married? What about when you have kids? Like, isn't that your best day ever? Mm -hmm. And I said, yeah, those are, those are one of them. And and yesterday's gone. Tomorrow's not freaking promise. So why would I wait for a day outside of today to, to like give a 10 out of 10? No, today is 10 out of 10. Today is my best day ever. Today I'm giving 110% in everything that I do to be my greatest possible self. So that's why today is the best day ever. I'm going to squeeze every last drop of juice and fulfillment and joy and passion and excitement out of today because it's, it could be my last one. Like my, my, one of my former business partners died a couple months ago. He's 30 years old. Holy and I'm shit. like, I'm like, what the F, you know, I'm 27 years old. And this guy's like a couple years older than me. He's already like he passed away. Like I'm blessing him and his family and sending so much love. And it just really grips me with how short life can be. So I'm going to really appreciate everything that I've got in this moment and make the most of it. I mean, preach it. <laughs> Damn, I got I got nothing. That was amazing. Take that deserves a screenshot right now. So if you guys think that deserves a screenshot, take yes. one, post it on Instagram, tag me at Project Me with Tiffany. Also tag Chris at I am Millionaire Chris, so we can see that you guys got it. You heard it. You got a heaping dose of motivation and positivity. And if you didn't, I'm very concerned about your well-being. <laughs> and I have a prescription for it. Thank you. <laughs> Chris, thank you so much for coming on. Like I needed this today, selfishly. Yes. You are you you really are that energetic. Like 
now I'm convinced it's taken me a few months of stalking you and it's official. <laughs> you have the Tiffany Carter Project Me stamp of approval, meaning of authenticity. <laughs> hey, Tiffany, I, I appreciate you. I love you. You're doing such amazing work in the world. And I'm, I'm just so blessed to be here on, on your platform and to be a part of your journey and to be seeing you. I'm going to give you the biggest freaking hug at this event this weekend. It's going to be awesome. We're going to rock it. You're going to, you're going to absolutely blow these women's minds because I know you have a story and you have a message and you have a soul that penetrates people in their reality and wakes them up and shakes them up so that they can step into their greatness. You're, you're freaking amazing, girl. Super oh, proud of you. Thank you. The feeling's mutual. All right. I will talk to you guys later. And again, if you really want to send some extra love, if you haven't gotten the hint, like the last 50 times I said it, do an iTunes review that would really help the show and also allows us to keep growing and producing great content since this is a free resource to all of you, but it is not free to create. Love you guys. <laughs> if you enjoyed this podcast, please write a five-star review on iTunes. Not only will this make me super happy, but it will allow more listeners to find our special show. Simply help me help others. 